Today we're going to look at setting the scene or writing settings and I know a lot of people have difficulty with this because they feel it could be boring, because they feel it could slow the movement of the story and just because they feel they end up repeating themselves sometimes so we're going to look at things you can do to really make sure that your scene setting is none of those difficult things and that it's exciting for your readers too. So I'm going to give you my three top tips for setting the scene, writing descriptive settings that are engaging and powerful and really keep your reader focused on your story, so stick around. So my first tip is to use senses. You are going to use your writerly senses in a way that will manipulate your poor readers. They will be powerless against you, I promise. Um, we'll look at in another video about how you can develop your writer's senses and what I mean by that, uh, so look out for that one. But for now, I just want you to think about how your own senses prod your emotions, because that's basically what you're going to try and do here. You are going to use the senses, senses to poke at your, your poor readers and prod those emotions, because the emotional connection to a sense is very strong. Um, I'll give you an example. If I recall the taste of the orange cake that my grandmother used to make, that is a very powerful memory for me associated with that taste. And obviously you don't want your readers to be going off thinking about their grandmothers and their cakes. You want them to think about your story. But what happens if you use a sense to provoke a feeling is that it provokes the memory of the feeling rather than the memory itself. So if I think about orange cake and the taste of it, instead of thinking instantly about my grandmother, the first thing I do is to just recall the way it made me feel. And if that's the feeling you want people to have in your story, then that's ideal. And because your story is quickly moving on, they won't have time to actually drift off into the memory, but they will be prodded into feeling that thing, and the feeling is what keeps them engaged. So your first technique for getting your descriptive setting writing really good and powerful is going to be using the senses. So don't just rely on seeing things. That's always the most popular, the first one that comes to you. Don't just rely on hearing things, but also think about how you can use taste and smell and touch. Um, we'll look again more specifically, as I say, about involving your own senses in your writing uh, to reach other people. But just for now, just think about how a memory of a sense works on you and imagine how you can use that to connect with your readers in the story. So use senses, that's the first tip. The second tip is engage imagination. Engage imagination. And by this I don't just mean your imagination, which of course is fully engaged because you're right in the book. I mean engage the imagination of your readers. Now what you want to do here is give your readers enough information to start to imagine the setting or the scene, but not fill it all in for them. Give them a rough drawing, give them a sketch, give them an outline, maybe with one or two details that they need and we'll come back to that, but give them room to use their own imaginations because that is more powerful. When your readers have to work a little bit harder to see your scenes, they're engaging with it. That active engagement with a story is much more powerful for the reader. It's a more um, complete experience. Um, if you've ever watched a film, for example, where everything's laid out for you and it's really easy and you don't have to try, watching a movie is a much more passive experience anyway than reading a book. But if you don't have to work anything out, if you don't have to try at anything, it's easy to detach yourself from that story. And the same thing is true of reading. And if you lay everything out for your reader in the way of setting a scene, why do they have to bother? Why do they have to try? So engage their imagination. So that means you can give them the detail they'll need to have the overall picture, but allow them to fill in the gaps. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as what you've imagined, and, and you'll probably never know. But what matters is that they can see it, that their mind's eye is busy and active. It is helpful to give them details of things they won't be familiar with or might not be familiar with. So if you're writing historical fiction, bear in mind not everyone will know 
um, what a Louis XIV escritoire looked like. Uh, not everyone will know the sort of carriage that a Victorian London cabbie would use. Um, you might want to give details like that, that's fine. But you can use shorthand for other things, you know, you, you can use shortcuts to things that we do know about. Okay, so the second one is to engage imagination, and that is your reader's imagination as well as your own. That's tip number two. Tip number three is make the scene active. Okay, that doesn't mean you're going to have your setting dancing about. It means that instead of just having a static setting which you are describing, you discover that scene and that setting through action. Um, and this is much easier for a reader to, to take on. I mean, what you don't want to do is put great chunks of descriptive writing um, in passages. And at the beginning of a chapter, we need to know where we are here at all comes. It's, it's not good, is it? So there are times when you will write descriptive passages and that's fine, particularly in a very busy story. If you've got a lot of action, you'll give your reader a nosebleed and they don't get a chance to draw breath and steady up and just sort of take it all in. So it is sometimes okay to write descriptive passages, but it's not okay every time you move to a new place or every time there's a change in time and you want to show that to just pile on a whole lot of descriptive writing. That is going to slow your story down and it is going to be the bits that people begin to skip. And we don't want that. Okay, so what do I mean by making it active? What I mean is, instead of just opening a room, for example, opening a door onto a room and describing the room, have your character do something in that room. Have them walk across the room, have them run their hand along the back of the chair, have them um, walk over to the fireplace and put another log on the fire, or have two people standing at the fireplace so that you can have one standing in front of it and somebody else putting logs on. That sort of thing tells you it's a huge fireplace if it's got room for two people. So you're already giving dimensions and shape and space and scale in your scene without actually saying, it was a big fireplace. Um, you're finding active ways that work in, as you do with dialogue, and you can use dialogue in the same way, have them pick things up, have them notice things in dialogue, in the action of the scene, and that will make it much easier for your readers to take in the details they need to see that scene without even noticing that they're doing it. So I just thought I'd give you a little example of this, um, because I, I thought it might be helpful to see how I'd written a piece. This is from um, The Witch's Daughter, and this is about halfway through the book, and one of the settings is Victorian London, and I had to move from a different time and a different place and this was the first time we've been to this setting and I start with the date I give Fitzrovia London 1888 so you've you, you know roughly what we're getting um, but at this point you don't know much else about it um, and it's going to be a, a teaching hospital um, that we're going to visit and spend this next chunk of the book in and this is how I start I thought this would be helpful for you to see what I mean by active description, okay? So Fitzrovia, London, 1888. One. The cadaver had already begun to stink. Eliza stepped aside to allow the men to manhandle the corpse off the handcart, through the doorway, and into the coolness of the morgue. The left arm of the deceased brushed against her brown skirt as he was carried by. Put him over there, please. She pointed at a vacant wooden table in a near corner. Gently now. Don't fret yourself, ma'am. The older of the two men treated her to a toothless grin. The old knock or bump ain't gonna bother this fella no more. He grunted as he swung the body up onto the scrubbed surface. Eliza peered down at the figure. In the low gaslight, his features were softened, but there was no mistake in the face of someone who had lived a cruel life. All his woes were etched around his eyes and across his forehead, and his own aggression dragged down the corners of his thin mouth. Small flecks of light glinted off the backs of the lice that inhabited his hair. The noose that had dispatched him to another place had burned a vivid line around his neck. His clothes were filthy. Eliza pitied him his lonely end. What had brought him to the gallows she did not know. Whatever his crime, it seemed unreasonably cruel to deny the man a burial. But such was the fate of murderers with no one to claim the body or pay funeral costs. His destiny was to be an instrument of instruction 
for the medical students at the Fitzroy Hospital who would pour over him, greedily slicing his organs, delving and probing and dissecting without a care for who he was or where he had come from. The point with that is um, that through the poor old cadaver, the poor old dead murderer, you've got an idea of the room he's inhabiting. It's a hospital, it's a teaching hospital. Um, I've told you about the, the, the wooden tables, the, the tightness of it, the lack of space. Everything is in there, but I haven't actually set about describing a room. We've done it through our poor deceased character. So I hope that's helpful. So we'll recap those. We've got use your senses, engage the imagination, and make your scene active. And those are three ways that will really help people to see your scenes and stop you feeling you're just writing the in between bits. Um, those scenes can be very important for keeping your reader's attention, for engaging their emotions, for making them actively read your work and use your their imaginations as well as your own, because that's what's going to make them love your story. So try those tips, see how you get on with it, see if it really helps your setting the scene pieces of writing and that you no longer fear them and yawn at them. Um, tell us in the comments how you get on, tell us how you like to tackle writing, setting the scene, and uh, happy writing. <laughs>